Welcome to the podcast. Welcome. It's a podcast. Pilot episode part two. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're kidding. Can you imagine? Actually, there are, there are definitely movies or shows that have that, two pilot episodes. Well, no, where like the 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 pilot is a two parter. Oh, why would you do that? I don't. I mean, it depends on if the first episode is interesting enough. That's true. Then it's like not only are you hooked. But there's a cliffhanger, so you gotta watch the second episode. Yeah. And then once you watch the second episode, you're fine. You can stop and move on with your life. Welcome to Welcome the basement to the suite. Welcome to the podcast. suite. Well. Podcast. Basement thank suite. Thank you guys to whoever responded to the questions. Yeah. Welcome to the podcast. Ben's here saying hi. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, thank you so much. For, appreciate it a lot. Yeah. And we're looking forward to answering all of them. And maybe, is that all we want to do? I have I have a game in mind if we have time left over. Sounds good. Um, but depending on uh, how in-depth we get with some of these uh, questions, we might not. Sounds good. So. Also, also before we start... If you if there are some things that you wanted to critique us on and want us to do better, let us know those as well. Yes. Because we would love some feedback. Be can be kind and constructive. Construct some criticism. Yes. But make sure that the criticism also constructs. True. Yeah. Great. With without further ado, mm -hmm. uh, our first question. Comes from our good friend, Keenan. Hey, thank you, Keenan. Uh, Keenan asks, uh, what do you each think is the best and most meaningful horror movie you've seen? Ooh, okay. So, like, you know that I'm not good at answering these yes. questions. I don't like putting anything as the top number one thing. Mm -hmm. Um... So I'm going to let you answer the question okay. while I try and think of some semblance of an answer. Great, cool. <laughs> um, the best and most meaningful. I feel like those are two different movies. Okay. Um, yeah. The best movie that I've seen, um, <clears throat> Midsummer. Yeah. Because it's, it's just, every element of it is so incredible. Um cinematography and then I'm a huge visual person so like all the colors and like the flowers and everything and all the yeah like the flower motif um what else like all the different symbols that are there you know the bear and the blood and it's all just that. a bear it's just a bear it's never it's... just a bear okay but like anyways <clears throat> Midsummer is the best movie that I my person what I think yeah. Um, most emotional, though? No. Um, most emotional. Mo or most or meaningful. Most meaningful, I'd say, is It. Mm. It is, like, one of my favorite horror movies ever. Because of how confrontational it is. Okay. It's very, just... Everything about it's just so good, and it makes me so scared every time. And mm -hmm. the second one sucked a little bit, but yeah. um, I really enjoyed the first one. It it's most meaningful because it's definitely a horror movie that scared me, and I'm okay. not someone who gets like scared that much because of how many horror movies I watch, right? And how much I know, like. Oh, they're using this makeup here and this shot yeah. or shot like that. Like, everyone knows how it's done, you know? Sure. I've seen so many interviews and so many videos and just, like, so many behind-the-scenes stuff. Um, That's yeah. actually one of the ways that I, like, if, if a horror movie is getting, like, really, really intense for me, my coping mechanism is to, like, think about the technical aspects of, like, mm -hmm. oh, that, that's gross. Those are some really good prosthetics because mm -hmm. it makes me feel gross. Right. Um, exactly, it's doing its job. Yeah. Um, I also, um, it's not so much the clown that's scary, but it's the power that it has to morph. Right. That is just the worst. Yeah. And yeah, it'll. It's it's kind of like an uns 
I, I can't quite describe what it does to me. It just, like, it makes me want to hide under a blanket and, like, recite the Bible, you know? Right. Like, it makes me so scared. It's something, yeah. like, as a kid that I would never, ever, ever recover from. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so, uh, again, I'm gonna do best and most meaningful as two mm -hmm. different entries. Best, I would also say, Midsummer. Yeah. Um, just, I, as I've kind of been, like, reading and watching different things about the movie, it's really cool how it's a movie that is both about a failing relationship, mm -hmm. but is also, like, the main horror of the movie is watching this girl fall in, fall prey to this fascist community. Yeah. Um, and the way that they kind of, like, weave those two th sort of themes in mm -hmm. is really well done. Yeah. Most meaningful, I know not everyone considers this a horror movie, uh, but A Quiet Place. Oh, okay. Um, it's the, f it was the first, like, really scary movie that I had seen in a long while. Mm -hmm. Um, and, like... I, I, my, the entire time, my, my nether regions were clenched. Yeah. Um, I was, I, I went with some friends from high school, and the entire time we were just very firmly gripping each other's hands. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as I cried real hard mm. at that movie. I thought you were going to see The Lighthouse for Most Meaningful. I would, I just, I would say that if I knew what it means. Okay, yeah. I don't know what, I love that movie very much. Yes. I just, but I haven't been able to figure out entirely what it means. Maybe that's, that's the point. Maybe. Um, I also really like Quiet Place just because, like, John Krasinski is a reason oh, for yeah. writing it. And he and Emily Blunt, like... It makes sense why they do so well in that movie. Yeah. He just said um, it was, like, a message for his kids. Yeah. Not much. Which is like, kind of what made it the most meaningful. Right. Okay. For me. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Um. Thank you for your question, Keenan. Yes, thank you so much. Continue to send yes, them in. Yes, please do. Uh, we have a handful of movie suggestions to talk about <gasps> from cool. our from our good friend... Uh, and my co-podcaster, Emmett Hanley. Hell yeah. Um, so, first on Emmett's list, Vivarium. <gasps> yes! Oh boy. This, um, this was a fun movie. So my brother actually suggested this movie because he loves it. <laughs> it's he's, so good. He's also 16, but yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much I, like absorbed from it hmm. outside of like I don't know it's just it it was in my definition it was more of a popcorn movie because it does hmm. and I talked to Emmett about like his thoughts about it and I do agree with him it's more just like uh how do you say it's like a like a minor commentary on gender roles yeah and, and like and, and the family model yeah, and how cyclical it all is. Yeah. But for the most part, they invested more into, like, physical? Hmm. Not physical, how do you say? Like, uh, just visual elements more. Yeah. And that's the part that I They went a little bit more liter literal mm -hmm. with it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. It could have been... It could have been weirder. Mm-hmm. I, I I love it as it is, Same. but there were definitely moments where I was like, I wonder how weird this is going to get, mm -hmm. and then it only got a little bit weird. Yeah. I mean, the movie on the, on, like, on average is, is weirder than average. It's odd, yeah. It's very, like, strange, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the reasons I love it, mm -hmm. but I do think it could have gone... It, it had the opportunity to go a little bit more off the rails True. than it did. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And I, I, I was kind of watching it as just kind of like a commentary on, um, sort of the idea of the nuclear family. Yeah. And the effect that that concept and like the existence of that concept has mm -hmm. on 21st century couples. Right. Because we have this couple who is kind of forced into this life that they never really felt comfortable in and were yeah. never intending to maybe have. Mm -hmm. And but suddenly they're forced into this situation and have to make it seem like they're doing okay and they right, have to right. and they have to raise a living being mm -hmm. you know in that context will ultimately just kind of drive them nuts and exactly yeah. uh spoilers by the way sorry yeah go watch it though go yeah we've been vague enough that you should yeah, still absolutely next one color out of space we have not seen not seen this yet not but yet i've heard some things hp lovecraft and nicholas cage it's it's what a combination yeah um i have mixed feelings about both yeah uh mandy Nick cage is only ever in really really bad movies or really really good movies or movies that are so weird it takes a moment to realize that they're good yeah for I, example yes mandy apparently what is mandy mandy is another Nick Cage movie. Mm -hmm. It's like very, very violent, mm -hmm. very stylized. Basically, Nick Cage goes on a on a vengeance rampage. Of course, yeah. Yeah, but I think he's like he's killing a bunch of cultists. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we yeah we haven't we haven't seen it, so we can. That's about as much commentary. Did you just? <laughs> Sorry, I'm playing with a fidget toy and I broke its head off. Yeah. Okay, so that just happened. Yeah, That's it's fine. fine. Moving on. Uh, next on the list was The Lighthouse. Yeah. Which I feel we've... I think we've done about as much commentary as I think we have in our brains. I don't to know. To each other, though, not to the podcast. This is true. Yeah. So what are your thoughts... On the lighthouse, because I know you have a lot. You I have some. You um, have mixed thoughts on on the lighthouse. Actually, why don't you go first? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And I'll jump off. Of that. So so like I said, I there's a lot in this movie that I have not managed to unpack. There are a lot of motifs and little arcs in this movie that I'm still not entirely sure what they were trying to do with. Um, but on the whole, it is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Or, it's it's one of my favorites. Right. It's one of my new all-time favorites. I personally wouldn't go, like, I don't know that it's my favorite because, yeah. again, like, I, I do have to be fully invested for me to know exactly what yeah. To get, like score it, you know, and and maybe this is just me as like a rookie amateur uh, film buff, but uh, there were several layers that I, you had to break through in order yeah. to uh, get meaning from. So there was yeah. the language barrier. The language and, was a big um, one. That was an issue, and even like it was almost Shakespearean and almost. Like, not, Even now, when I'm, what? Not at, I found it less difficult to decode than Robert Eggers' other movie, The Witch. The Witch. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, but it's still... It's it's still challenging, especially yeah. for me, because even when reading Shakespeare, what I like to do is read the Sparknotes version, go watch the actual Shakespeare production on um, Royal Canadian Company, or whatever, sure. uh, whatever it is. Royal Shakespeare and Company? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, that, and then, oh, and only then will I actually read the text. So I can get full meaning and full, like, I can actually critique it. Mm -hmm. Like a, like I would critique any other piece of literature. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there were all those barriers for me. I think I need to give it another watch, and mm -hmm. I think I need to... 
You watch sit it with, and analyze. Watch it with subtitles. Watch it with subtitles. Yeah. And yeah. And I think I need to sit and analyze, like, scene by scene in order to properly give my opinion on it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Leon Pinto. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, to, to take a departure away from a uh, horror movie dialogue, uh... Leon asked, uh, the socioeconomic model of social responsibility, or just like Marvel movies? For those of you who don't know, Leon is my brother. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to talk about the first one. Hmm. Because I have absolutely no clue what he's trying to tell me. It's like collective responsibility. Yeah, no. I don't know. Um, I'm good. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're not the podcast for this kind of talk. No, we're not. Um, Marvel movies? Yeah. Um, I, again, am not, I'm not the person to be talking to about this, because yeah. <laughs> I've watched Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, I've just, I've watched, like, watched... Spider-Man. Yeah, most of the newer ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, I mean, they're fun. Yeah. I don't... I I think that the newer ones are... They, they got... movie Marvel movie is kind of on the entire arc of the cinematic universe. Mm -hmm. Started out pretty strong. Like, Iron, Iron Man 1 was quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, Hulk was alright. And then it kind of took a dip into mediocrity. mediocrity yeah. Where they were like, oh yeah, we're making a bunch of these now, so we gotta get the, this, like, universe established and we Qual entity over quality yes yeah um and then as soon as all of those characters were established mm -hmm. then they were able to play with them and have more fun with it right. and they got more directors that mm -hmm. were able to make their own fun sort of kind of takes on the world yeah like thor ragnarok i think is on my like, I think, I would say is the best Marvel movie, oh. personally. Um, yeah. Just oh, in... The two Guardians. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. I also really like that one. Yeah. Um, cool. Hope you're happy, Leon. Yeah. Can you, like... <laughs> Never mind. I'll call you about it. Uh, our good friend Becca, uh, asked if we would like to talk about our weirdest dates. Oh, thank you for that question, Becca. I would love to talk about that. I think our weirdest date was... I, I mean, like, are we talking with each other? Or Just in general. Something? Our first date, my our first, first one date. with you, was the weirdest date I've ever been on. Yeah? Yeah. I think so. Me too. Okay. I think me so too. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, That was the day that we both decided we should not be together. I think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was that weird of a date yeah. that a couple who we've we've been dating for about a month, a year and a half mm -hmm. that it 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 took that one date to make us be date. like maybe not maybe not maybe never maybe um yeah so what what did we do on that date I think well I think one of the elements of it was the fact that both of us are very adverse to like stereotypical trinity culture yeah and the date itself was a very stereotypical trinity, trinity date. date yeah um and i think mostly we were, I, I would say it's like stereotypical first year trinity date exactly so what people do when they have no idea like we we do. went on went on a walk in the back 40 we sat by the river and talked about what we want for our lives yeah we went to back to Northwest and yeah. watched a movie with like very very limited physical contact, which mm -hmm. is a little, which is a largely my and fault. Then, and then you asked if we could cuddle. Yeah. And so I was like, I, uh, sure. And so you put your arm around me, and I was like, huh. wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then we like would hold hands every now and then. But yeah. Then it was still like. There were no sparks, but that was only because neither of us are, like, 
we, neither of us were comfortable <laughs> yeah. in the greater context of like we weren't neither of us were comfortable as people enough to enjoy being with each other exactly which it, it's because neither of us are like conventional date going people correct um i think a good date for the both of us would have been like playing a board game yeah or yeah just like yeah doing something doing something silly. like silly like maybe slightly competitive oh yeah 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 um thank you so, for your question. thank you becca for that question uh, the next few suggestions come in from my good friend, Tori. Hey, Tori. I met you. Yeah. Um, first one is to talk about our personal creative processes. In so, what context? I mean... I think you should take it in terms of writing. And you think I'll so? And it in terms of theater. Like okay. Acting. Um, that's what I have... I, okay, so, my most recent, I guess, yeah, writing for me in general, because I've been writing a lot, in a lot of different weird mediums lately. Yeah. Like, I've started writing video essays, I'm running a D&D &D campaign, mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to work on a play, mm -hmm. um, and all three of those have, you know, my process is, has, is similar in some ways and very different in others. So like with yeah. video essays, what I'll do is if I'm sitting watching YouTube and I have a thought about something that has to do with what I want to write about, mm -hmm. I'll go to my little like outline and write a note in there. And then eventually when I feel like I have enough notes on in that outline is when I start to write my script. Oh, I see. And okay. then I basically take those notes, turn it into my script, and then kind of flesh it out a bit more. Okay. Um, and then and then once my script is done, I record it. Mm -hmm. I record the audio for it, and then I go into video editing. Okay. When it comes to writing, for when it comes to writing for D and D. A lot of the time, I <sighs> writing for D and D has been complicated because yeah. I've gone through a couple phases of like I started out really excited because it was a new thing, and I was excited about the world that I had made, um, and I was excited to like have people interacting with it, and then as you know, as as a lot of DMs and writers in general go do. Mm -hmm. I kind of went through a phase where I felt like I was just interacting with it in order to meet deadlines. Right. And I got really tired and I started feeling like it, like, and I started not being super thrilled about what I had made mm -hmm. to the point where halfway through a session I decided this is not good enough. I don't want to do this right now. Yeah. And it had to take like a solid month and a half. Hiatus. Hiatus. Yeah. Um, my process is I'll I'll talk in terms of acting, is a little I don't know, normal, regular. Yeah. Like, uh physicality for me is the most important thing. <laughs> Just mm. because like, it's the way that I think, yeah. and it's the way that makes most sense to me. Um, so what I'll do is just explore what it means to be my character physically mm -hmm. first. And um, I do what Meisner does, which is, like, put myself in those circumstances. So, sure. like, under yeah. the given circumstances, how would I... How would Alicia... Behave. Yeah. Yeah, which is... Again, like, makes most sense for me, and, yeah, and then I put it all on the stage. Yeah, yeah. It's very, yeah, I don't know how to go into depth about that. I think, yeah, I, I find, I find my, my, my character, 
I try I try to definitely like pay attention to like physicality because I find that stuff really fun. Mm -hmm. um, especially if the character is very physical. Mm -hmm. um, but I I mean I'm very much a I'm a words guy. Yes. So I pay attention to the way they talk, how they process thoughts, mm -hmm. how they present thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um, how, how deep are the thoughts and such. Right. Um, and also trying to, f and I also try to figure out, like, in the moment, like, how much do they care about the thing that they're talking about mm -hmm. right now, and why do they care about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, I can also, actually, I have more experience, I changed yeah. my mind, I have more experience in, like, visual art yeah um my process for like painting and like drawing and everything i do a lot of mandalas mm. um yeah i i just do them i don't know i i um you're similar to me in that aspect in which in the sense that like you just try to make stuff yeah exactly it gives me a lot of peace of mind and um it's just like a hobby thing to do. Yeah. But when it comes to actually like making the art happen, it makes me a little unmotivated. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like I don't I don't want to do it. Why, yeah. Why do it when when someone's asking me to do it? No, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah. That That's was fair. not part of the question, but anyways. Yeah. Um, second que question from Tori. Mm -hmm. How your education has shaped your worldview? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll start. Go for it. I went to... Oh, man. Both, for we, both of us, this is a very... Why don't we just do... We can talk about charity in a different episode. Yeah. Why don't we just do... Uh, like elementary up to yeah. yeah yeah so even then this is, this is a very loaded question for Absolutely. both of us so I like kindergarten grade one and grade three I went to a private Christian school in Calgary it was great made a lot of friends um, they were the kind of friends that like didn't mind during recess uh, reenacting battle scenes from video games with me, and I and I and I am looking back. That's pretty cool. I really appreciate that of them. Um, even when they didn't want to, I would do it on my own. <laughs> that's pretty sick. Um, yeah. Um, grade two, and then grade four through six, I homeschooled. Mm. And I have, I am aware of the pros of homeschooling, mm -hmm. especially right now. Yep. Um, you can do it at your own pace. You can, you've got a lot more leeway as far as like taking trips. Mm -hmm. If you really need to, you can take your homework with you. Um, and if your mom is really, really tired, she can just cancel school for the day. Um, the cons are, you are not, you do not get the same kind and the same amount of social interaction that most other kids are getting. That is not to say that, we're get, that we don't get any social interaction, it just means that you're, it just looks like hanging out with a bunch of other homeschooled kids at someone's mom's house. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, there's a little bit more of an obligation to like those people yep. than the people who are just in your class, mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit weird. Um, I also think that if you're going to be putting together a homeschool curriculum, you need to be aware of your own biases and... Yep. Your exactly. own, the way that your own beliefs shape your worldview yeah. and how that's going to affect your children. Absolutely. Because, uh, grade seven and eight, 
I was my first time going to a public school. I don't I don't recommend coming straight out of homeschool during like right into junior high going to your first public school. I do not recommend. No. It's a it's a very aggressive bubble pop. Of course it would be. Yeah. Like it's a form of culture shock. Yeah. Especially because up until then it was a like vaguely Christian education. Yeah. And then bam public school. Yeah. And then suddenly there are people talking about Family Guy and The Simpsons and suddenly your your references to Family Channel on don't Veggie have Tales. and Veggie Tales and Adventures and Odyssey don't have quite as much clout. No. As you had hoped they would. Yeah. Um, you go. I had a terrible high school experience. Yeah. It was the worst. I um, from grade from grade kindergarten to grade six, I went to a private school in Mumbai, India, and yes, um, grade six, my dad got a job in Cairo, Egypt, so grade six I moved there and redid, not redid, I just did grade six over there, and I did, and I graduated there as well from high school. Um, it was the worst because I went to an American high school and I was Indian and people judged me for being brown and also talking the way that I do so I completely changed my accent mm -hmm. um, to seem cool. I had no friends through middle school which is 6th grade through 8th um, grade yeah. and then high school was also garbage because it was a the school that I went to was um, a private American international high school, and that is short for rich kids. Right. Um, yeah. So I took rich kids with really high grades. With really high grades, I did IB, and if you don't know what IB is, then good for you. Um, yeah. It was the worst. I hated every part of it. All I wanted to do was get away. And that's what I did. And I'm so happy now. But it mm -hmm. did... Um, it High school taught me a lot of things. Mostly fight or flight related things. Mm -hmm. And how to adapt in situations where... Like high school was just garbage because I got bullied. And I got... Um, just how, how do you say, I was, ostracized? Was a, yeah, I was behaved very, I, I just, I received a lot of racist comments, yeah. um, and the one thing that I loved most, theater, I'd never get cast in any of the main roles, even though I was, I made most sense for all that, specifically because I was a brown child. Mm -hmm. They only casted, like, um, kids of parents hmm. who taught there oh no um yeah there was it was very it was a lot of politics um yeah. and yeah i just wanted to leave the entire time it was the worst um i did end up traveling a lot though i traveled for soccer i traveled for basketball i traveled for speech and debate and this is all to like prague and Bar barcelona and um berlin and boston and everything which was really great. Yes, that's my answer. Nice. Um, I didn't even mention my high school experience, which uh, was actually Complete quite... Complete opposite yeah, of Yeah, was actually... I had a really good time for the most part. It took me it took me a little bit to, like, find my crowd. Yeah. But, like, once I did find my crowd, that those, those people have stuck with me for the most part, like, yeah. to this day, um, including Tori. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And I that... have, like, <laughs> I was never part of the popular girls group, mm -hmm. so something that happened with your sister, Connor, also happened with me, where all the lame tech guys <laughs> are now my best friends. Right. <laughs> and those are the people I know from high school. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to, uh, to Gray Lewis, 
Hey, hey, sick, Gray. Hey, Gray. Very sick dude. Um, uh, who else? Like, you know who you are. Yeah. Like, shout out to all my centennial yeah. fam. Yeah. Okay. Last one from Tori. You're going to be really excited about this one. Yeah. Talk about diversity in the theater industry I slash will in, the, not. in theater <gasps> education. I mean, I'm not going to talk about this I, one. I it's like not my place to talk, talk about, about it. it. Um, well, yeah, you've... I did, yeah. Uh, it sucks. It's terrible. It's... Uh, it needs to, needs to change It needs to be um, significantly less ass. <sighs> Diversity? What? Okay, so the question is what? It's not really a question, just a, a topic suggestion. To talk about. Yeah. Okay. Diversity... Yes. In the theater industry. Yes, slash uh -huh. in theater education. You can okay. focus um, on... I would... I would like there to be more... Not just because the whole Black Lives Matter movement is happening, but mm. just generally more... Um, like socially, Black history related. Yeah. Um, like socially aware works. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Everything that we've studied in theater history is either, or everything so far that I've studied is either like white men or indigenous men. Which, again, like, I I love that we're actually studying about indigenous culture. Absolutely. Like, thank fucking yeah. God. Um, sorry for saying fuck. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, it's super great, and I, it's frustrating because in the context of a class, no one's actually going to do the work, and we're all going to, mm. like, slack off and everything. Right. But even just the fact that we know these little tidbits about And then it's established that this information is important. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, like, when, back when I was in high school, we learned so much about, like, Maya Angelou, and, mm -hmm. um... You know, African American writers and everything. Yeah. And I'm sure we learn stuff like that in Amdram, but I yeah. I would I would like to have learned more in mm -hmm. about just black actors and black like just black history yeah. and how how a certain uh, playwright changed. Yeah. Uh, what it meant to be in Canadian theater. Yeah. And, yeah, because I'm sure there are some out there. Uh, I'd like yeah. to see more representation in that. <sighs> in terms of... I... This is a weird take on it, but I honestly... Just, I mean, I'm in university, so like, mm -hmm. I am going to be getting opportunities, and I have gotten opportunities. Like, yeah. um, I was, like, Snow Queen. Yeah. In Snow Queen. <laughs> um, and I'm brown, and very Indian and yeah but for yes I don't feel like I again am qualified enough to talk about this hmm. perhaps we'll come back to come it back another to time it, yeah um moving on we've got a bunch of wait wait, wait. not saying that uh, there aren't <laughs> any issues with current theater diversity right it's just that at this time you don't. I don't know what to say. You don't have the thoughts. I don't have experience yet. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Enough experience. Yes. Okay. Go. Okay. <gasps> uh, we've got a bunch of a bunch of topics from Amaris. Oh, sick. Um, it's very clear we don't necessarily need to take these seriously. Okay, good. I because the first one this. is the history of the clarinet. Oh. <laughs> uh, once upon um. a time, a guy hollowed out a stick. And went toot toot. And yeah. then he was like, I wonder if I can make this a different toot toot. Yeah. Fun fact, um, the, the, the inventor of the clarinet, Harry mm. Clarinet, mm. Um, actually went to my school. Wow. Shout out to Harry. Ha shout out to Harry. Nice job. <laughs> Thanks, Amaris, for the questions. Uh, next one from yeah. Amaris How to change the oil in my 2015 Honda Civic. Uh, you, 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 you open her up, yeah. you take out the oil, mm -hmm. you put it in a box, mm -hmm. 
you take the oil that you want to put in there, you put her in there, close her up, yeah. and you're good to go. Let us know how that works out for you. Yeah. Um, the key, the key to changing oil mm -hmm. is for there to be different oil in there after the was before. Afterwards, correct, correct. I, I think that's the key, yeah. Yeah, there needs yeah. to be a change in oil. Correct. Yeah. Um, we're both professionals in case you... Absolutely. I, I do cars. Um, why yeah. won't her mom stop nagging her to clean her room? Because you need to clean your room. Friggin' get your crap together, Amaris. You know, Personally, in my opinion, honestly, <laughs> uh, room cleaning is something that you need to hit rock bottom in order to do. This is true. Um, in order to do by yourself. By yourself, correct. Um, on several occasions, my room will turn into an absolute dump. Mm -hmm. Like, every country in the world has taken their garbage and put in my room. <laughs> and I will wake up one day and I'll be like, wow, this sucks, dude. And I'll go make breakfast and I'll go to sleep. Right. And then I'll do the same thing the next day. And then it'll hit me that I've been doing this for a few right. days. Yeah. So I'll get off my ass, put on some good podcasts or podcast or music, or I'll watch a, like a shitty horror movie. Sorry for saying shitty. Um, it's okay, you've already said fuck. <laughs> okay. Now I've said it. Wow. Uh, did you say fuck? I did. Oh, okay, cool. Um, anyways, yeah, and then I'll like deep clean my room. Mm. I'm talking vacuum. I'm talking like get take a duster and get into nitty gritties that you haven't, the nitty gritties that you, you haven't gotten into for years. <laughs> like, I'm um, just everywhere. The forgotten nitty gritties. The one rabbit that you, the bunny that you had four years ago, the tiny shit pellet poop mm. that he left behind from four years ago, that gets picked up. Yeah. Yeah. By hand. By hand. Yeah. Gloves. No gloves. No gloves. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. Uh, to uh, conspiracies revolving around if it's possible to dig a hole to China. This Damn. just gave me the really hilarious picture of a bunch of uh, a bunch of fedora men mm. standing around a man trying to dig a hole to China, um, and they're yeah. just all like walking around him trying to decide if he can do it. Right. Personally, I don't think it's possible. I don't think because it's humanly oceans, possible. There's oceans in between. Also, gravity. <laughs> yes. Also, we can't dig under oceans, hmm. and we can't work around them because Pangea happened. Right. And, yeah, um, I don't think it's possible. I'm not interested in finding um, out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. But thank you for your question. Yeah. Next up, uh, the recent arrest of the Golden State Killer. I didn't know they arrested him. He's not so know. golden now. I don't know who the Golden State Killer is. Neither do I. He's been arrested, though. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, Won't be killing any more that... states. Yeah. Wow. He's golden, and he kills states. The Golden State Killer. I think we just live-streamed our breakup. <laughs> this isn't a live-stream. Oh, shit. Sorry for saying shit. <laughs> um, I'm glad he's arrested. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm glad. I hope he doesn't kill things anymore. Or yeah, anyone anymore. I agree. Yeah. Uh, next up, was the moon landing faked? Like, pfft. I don't know the significance. Like, why would it matter if it was? Yeah, honestly, um, we're all still living and still have regular jobs to do, and, and there like, are make money and there are currently robots on the moon. So at some point. Yeah. There was a moon landing that was not faked. True. Yeah. So, to, to answer your question, uh, Amaris, um, which moon landing are you referring to? Yeah. Because someone might have faked a moon landing. Mm -hmm. Might not have been a par part of NASA. True. Yeah. <laughs> so Someone definitely faked the someone, moon landing. Same, someone gave it a try. Someone, like, pulled up a picture yeah. of... 
the moon on their <laughs> um they like, laptop yeah. and did the two finger thing where they like you pretend your fingers are your legs yeah. and then took a picture of that. Yeah. And yeah. it was like you're on the beach just, but you're on the moon. Just Sunday chilling on the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, uh why is Amaris asking dumb questions? Personally, Amaris, in my opinion, honestly, um, <laughs> I think we're all in a place where we need to grow. Mm. Uh, just question more about the world that we live in. And uh, sometimes those questions that we need to be asking in our time of growth and development yeah. are dumb as shit. They're so dumb. But also, not your questions. No. My questions. For example... Where are thumbs? Where, where are they? I haven't seen them recently. I found one. Oh shit. Right there. Um. Wow. We've learned a lot today. We learned so much today. Are those so all the questions? Work. No, 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 oh, no, wow. no. Oh wow. How, we're, 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 how long is, gonna, is this podcast? This is going to be a full hour, dude. Really? Oh, absolutely. We don't want to save any questions for the next podcast? We'll see. I'm just saying we'll stop at an hour. Okay. It's going to take at least that long. Cool. Uh, next one is from our good friend Hannah. Hannah! Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's been so long since um, I've seen you. Her topic, suggestion, uh, vegetable babies. Okay. As in, First like, off, baby carrots? Uh, infant vegetables. Um, I love them. I yeah. like baby carrots. Baby carrots. That's what comes into my mind when... Newborn celery. baby carrots I prefer them not as round as they are hmm. I don't know what what's with the being so round like, uh, it's because they've been carved out of a larger carrot why do that when you could just eat a larger carrot because then they're not baby carrots what the shit <laughs> baby carrots shouldn't be a thing I'm mad you're now. correct what what kind of sense does that make it's so that it's it's easier. It's some white people shit. Yeah, absolutely is. Oh, he, man. At some point, some mom was like, "This carrot is too damn big. I want to be able to fit a bunch of them into a little plastic baggie and give to my child so he can complain about it at school." That's ridiculous. Yeah. Someone should sue white people. <laughs> it's, there, it, it's it's in the works. It's in the pro It's in progress. Yeah. Um, next one is from our wonderful friend, Liz. Hey, Liz. Hello, Liz. Um, she is us to talk about, and I'm reading it off, queer shit. Queer shit. Or, like, basement suite aesthetics. First okay. off, thank you for being, uh, yeah. uh thematically re relevant. Revelant. 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 The, My favorite far, movie. <laughs> starring. The Revelant. <laughs> starring Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> Um, sorry about that. Um, queer shit. Yeah. Man, it's weird for me to, like, I feel, I feel bad that I don't know enough about queer theory and just queer. Also, how nice. many times do, like, why isn't it more commonly referred to as queery? Oh, you're right. You're we, right. Gotta, we gotta get on that. Um, but yeah, both of us are a little, 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 little gays. Little gays, yeah. little gay beans. Um, yeah. I'm bi. I'm also bi, but in a different way. Yeah. Um. It's been sick. Yeah. I like being bi. It's weird yeah. as hell. It's really fun. Us both being bi. Yeah. It doesn't really affect our relationship too no. much, just because we're so aware of each other's bias. Well, that was one of the weird things when I like when I came out. Yeah. That I talked that I actually talked about um, was the fact that like being in our relation in our relationship mm -hmm. was one of the things that made me feel comfortable to like figure it figure it out. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as I figured Same. it out, I was like, well. 
It doesn't really apply. Doesn't, doesn't change much. No. And same. I only came out once I started dating you. Yeah. Which I came out to myself, rather. Because, mm. like, I was confident in you right. and us together that yeah. I was like, well, I find women attractive. Like, um, Yeah. And I've always found them attractive. I've just been like, I'm straight. I've dated yeah. boys for the longest time. But, like, yeah, I got over it. Yeah. Straight people, just, like, get over yourself and be, be bi. Yeah. yeah. Um. Next one is from my friend Tian. Hello, friend Tian. Yeah. I have not met you yet. No. No. Um. She she says rate an artist's top hits based on how much you like them. I don't know what that question means. I don't know either. Rate I, an artist's top hits based based on, on how much we like them. So okay, so just rate them. Sure. Okay. Like, um. Or give give our our own like top favorites. Let's start with um, Selena Gomez. Okay. Just off the top of my head. Uh, personal favorites would be um, Love You Like a Love Song. Mm -hmm. It's just consistently a good time. It's just such a jam. Like, give me that wub wub, Shit. please. Yeah. Uh, second one, Dance Again from mm -hmm. her newer one. Just the, uh, the, bass, the bass guitar on it. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it struts. Yeah. Um, my favorite artist. It's weird to choose from. I'm just gonna say Billy Eilish. Sure, yeah. Like, I've. I mean. Actually, I've been listening to, like, Sasha Sloan, Billy Eilish, a lot of, like, female artists. Yeah. Um. See, you should. You should have seen me in a crown. You should have. What's that? Yeah, one? you should see me in a crown. In a crown. That one is my absolute favorite, again, because of yes. bass. I'm a bass junkie. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I, that, I think that's all we really are yeah. required to give. Okay. The next one, I mean, I'm going into the ones that people, like, messaged to me. Okay. Uh, this one's from our friend Cam. Hello, Cam. Hello, Cam. All, our friend, also my brother. Yeah. Uh, he wanted us to talk about the cult classic film Hot Rod. Hell yes! Which... Is bringing us right back right, around, right around to our <laughs> to our first date, which this was the movie that we watched. We should see that movie again. I'm we really show should. You something. We absolutely should. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's so fun. Like, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's just so hilarious. Got, it's so quotable. Yeah. And like. And you you know the falling scene. You've yes. been doing that since that day. Yes. That we watched it. Yeah, and it's still hilarious. It's still funny. Um, Thank you, Cam, for your question. Please send more. Yeah. Also, give us your thoughts on Hot Rod. Yes. Would love to know. Um, also, for anyone in the in like anyone's questions that we're answering, if you want us to answer it a different way or yes. like. Have your own opinions, please comment them. Yes. We'd love please them. interact with us. It, yeah. Um, next one is from Alex. Walker? Yeah. Heck yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, he, Such a bundle of joy. Uh, broccoli versus cauliflower. Oh, interesting. Cauliflower. No. That wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Right. Ready? I think. On, on, on three, okay? Okay. One, two, three. Broccoli. broccoli. Okay. 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 It's um, it's taken me a while. I used to prefer cauliflower just because I don't like the like bristliness of yeah. broccoli, but I think um, flavor wise, broccoli takes it. Sorry, every time I like think about Alex, I get so happy. Just because, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. just there's such a there's such a like. It's such a positive energy that he brings into yeah. every room. Oh. I really hope you're hearing this, yeah, Alex. I hope we you're love you very me. much. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. And I'm sad that I won't get to see more of the goofiness that you bring because I'm leaving. Yeah. Yeah. On an airplane. On an airplane. Don't know when... Well, we don't... We do know when you'll be back again. I know. Yeah. Uh, from Mr. Ben Meadows, <laughs> who, 
who, if you've heard, like, some dishes being moved around in the background, that's, that's bad. Yeah. Uh, bucket list travel destinations. Oh. We've got these. Oh, yes. L l list yours first. Should I list five? We should both list five. Sure. Okay. I have always wanted to go to Kenya. I've been mm. there, but I want to go again. Um, Kenya... I want to go again to Berlin because it, it's just the best place. Yeah. Um, Australia. Mm -hmm. Japan. Mm. And South Africa. Okay. Yes. Um, I would say uh, Ireland, Scotland, um, New Zealand, Japan, and... Do, hard, isn't it? do you know what the other, do you remember one that I've that I've mentioned? Uh um oh no. Oh uh London. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. There you go. Rad, dude. Finally. Oh, okay, nice. From my good friend Trevor. <gasps> Hello, Trevor. I met um, him once briefly. Briefly. Very briefly. He sent us a bunch all in one. Okay. I'm gonna list them all and I'll see what sticks to your mind. Okay. Existentialism, false binaries, the Overton window, Steven Universe, succulents, transportation, hoaxes and gimmicks, improvement, professional speed walking. The two that stuck. Or succulents and professional speed walking. Okay. And of course, I, I would stick to someone like me. Um, I love succulents. I think they're a little bit of a bitch because, <laughs> like, I feel like I water them too much or too little. Right. I don't know how much you're supposed to water succulents. I don't get it. Right. And I don't I have I just don't want to look it up. You know. If you know how to properly take care of a succulent, yes, please let me uh. Know. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Also Basically. tell us Also how. please tell us. Um, and, I yes, they're like sick plants, dude. Like, they're pretty they're, cool. They're so sick. Um, what's the other thing that I said? Professional speed walking. Mm. Oh my gosh, this is a sport that I want to partake in very badly. <laughs> yeah. Is it part of the Olympics? I don't even know. Yeah. Okay. It's part of the Summer Olympics. Okay. I just, I, damn, like, I have to burp. Do it. Uh, excuse wow. me. Thank you. Um, something that I think that I would be good at, um, just because I don't have the greatest endurance, but once my body is, I feel like when I'm at that, like, I'm walking. Like, I can convince myself that I'm walking. Sure. Therefore, not burning as many calories mm. as I would be if I was running. So it's like, eh, it's okay. It's just walking. Like, people yeah. walk. But if I... And I tra and I feel like I could train my brain to do that and a professional speed walk at the same time. Mm. Um, formal speed walking, on the other hand. Mega mind related. Which, again... It, not again, but if you haven't seen it, go watch Megamind. Yeah, it's a good um, movie. Formal speed walking, I uh, would recommend. Hmm. Only at nighttime when hmm. uh, you're about to go chase the one you love. Nice. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I I latched on to because of course, um, uh, false binaries and Steven Universe. Mm -hmm. False binaries are one of the thing, uh, one of the things in, like, arguments that I'm better at picking up on. Okay. So, like, false equivalences. Right. Where someone will be like, well, w you can either choose between this or this. And I'm like, no, you can have a little bit, you can have both. They're not, mm -hmm. like, they're not mutually exclusive. Right. Um, and it's. Being able to pick up on those has been really good in, like, just being a part of, like, conversations where mm -hmm. things can get heated. Right. Yeah. Um, and just being able to 
Because a lot of the time it can just be like, your facts are incorrect. My facts are correct. Mm -hmm. um, but it it's, you know, if you're able to be like, okay, wait. That argument that you just presented has some structural problems. Yeah. Um, people are a lot more willing to interact with that than just needing to believe different facts. Yeah. At some point, you should probably believe the facts that are true. Yes. Um, but, you know, in this day and age, sometimes... It is a good it's thing a, to It's a process. So, yeah. Just being able to identify what those are. Yeah. Steven Universe. Of course. Oh, boy. Um, we're, yeah. we're watching through it again. Um, for me, the third time. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's technically kind of the yeah at the it's moment the it's the third time, time. Yeah. um i was watching it through with chloe mm -hmm. uh but she finished it without me mm -hmm. or she's gotten to the movie um and it's just it's such a beautiful show it's it absolutely has problems and like some of i think some of the the characters um, the things that they might be kind of analogies for aren't necessarily perfect analogies. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think on the whole, it's a show that I am very glad it exists. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all for today. Yeah. We thank you for your questions. Thank you so much. Yeah. We got way more responses than Please we... Please keep sending more, but yes. I'd love to talk about all this stuff. Yeah. Um, We're, we can probably do these, like, every other episode. Yeah. Also, in the future, I feel like we should take maybe three questions and talk about them in depth. Yes. Um, rather than go through all of them really quickly. Because we're trying to get through everyone, but... Um, Yes, please send more. I please. really like a answering them. And, yeah. And it, yes, I also like. I miss all these people. Yeah, you me know. too. So, thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Really hope you enjoyed this mm -hmm. rather chaotic episode. But it was it was it was it, it was, was barely. It was chaos structured. with continuity in the sense that it, it was, was organized like, chaos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Yeah, depending on what you're listening to this through, you can either click the follow button or click the little plus. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can like and subscribe and yeah, do your thing. Ring that bangus. Um, yeah, whatever you want to do. Thanks for thanks for stopping thanks by. Thanks for tuning in. See you later. Bye.